wheel, bitch. Once again, we are back on a Corrupted Poll Show. I am your host, Jay Sizemore. And this is going to be probably a long show. <sighs> I'm going to try to power through this. I don't want it to be a long show. But this is, the, the, this is my first episode since my appearance on the Savvy Shebs show. And right after I got off of there... Oh, shit. Uh, uh, oh, 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 um, just, my God. Uh, all hell broke loose and uh, I want to get right to it it's about uh, regarding Nina Turner it's so oh my goodness I don't know where to start so I'm just going to start here uh, on my Twitter um, Nina Turner said this if someone on the left is telling you that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert our potential allies to the left. You're witnessing a grifter that is doing nothing but putting marginalized communities in, gener- in danger. We don't build coalitions with right-wing authoritarians. And <laughs> Nick, his response, great, so leave the Democratic Party who are right-wing author- authoritarians. Yes, exactly. And then uh, the, the next person says, this is a shit lib saying, waiting for you to criticize a Republican even once. We're going to get to this. This is something that I've been I've been hammering on on this very show for quite some time now. It's no stranger to everyone, so we're going to deal with this. We're going to explain why this shit's going on and why it's happening. But I responded to her. I suppose I responded to Nina saying, uh, "Says the TYT employee who was rejected twice at the polls can't even get endorsed by the squad herself, but will tell us that the squad is the best opportunity progressive like us got." Ridiculous. Uh, Then it goes on uh, right here. When Jimmy Dore knocks a black progressive woman for pointing out conservative hypocrisy when it comes to the FBI, you know he's serious about being anti-black and protecting conservatives. And uh, yeah, my response, who's the black progressive woman in question? You know, when when this floated across my screen after I got off Sabby Shab's show, I'm sitting on my couch here. I'm scrolling up on my Twitter feed and I see this and I'm thinking, Jimmy Dore smeared Brianna Joy Gray? What the fuck? Did Jimmy Dore fucking smear Sabby Sabs? You know, I'm looking for an actual black progressive woman he somehow attacked. He didn't. You know, who's the black progressive woman in question? Can't possibly be you, Nina Turner. Voters in Shaker Heights rejected you. The squad wouldn't endorse you. The real issue is Jimmy Dore exposed you as an establishment Democrat, a right-wing conservative light establishment Democrat, a DLC Democrat, and a party loyalist. Not exactly news to anyone. She keeps going. I'm going to close my browser tabs as I move along here. What Nina Turner refuses to understand is Haitians weren't beaten by Jimmy Dore, by the Jimmy Dore administration. Mm-mm. I mean, how fucking simple can you get? Haitians weren't beaten by the Jimmy Dore administration, nor did he vote to increase their funding. Quite the opposite. He would divert their funding for Medicare for all debt forgiveness and to put California homeless people in actual homes. And I ca- and then I, I, I come up with this one. I found this one, too. At moments, at moments after leaving the Sabby Sab show on Thursday, I'm sitting on my couch and I see this. And immediately I tweet this out. 
when this was breaking trending news right on the side panel of Twitter here. Anyone remember Jimmy Dore blasting the Hollywood elites over their support of Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, saying it would make everyone on stage more nervous about being attacked? It happened. Author Selman Rushdie stabbed on lecture stage in New York. Salman Rushdie, whose novel The Satanic Verses, I was a kid when this happened, when, uh, when he published that uh, Satanic Verses. I remember him getting the death threats. Salman Rushdie, whose novel The Satanic Verses drew death threats from the Iran leaders in, in the uh, 1980s, was stabbed in the neck and abdomen prided by a man who rushed the stage as the author was about to give a lecture in Western New York. This is this this was this is the direct this is a direct aftermath of the Will Smith Chris Rock slap. People who supported it, people who supported that happening, people who assorted who supported Will Smith getting up there, and and uh, and violently slapping Chris Rock for a for a sick joke. Okay, it was a it was a really bad joke. They brought this on. They they sent the message saying, "Hey, this is not, this is the new normal now." And I remember, and um, and uh, let's see. This is this is uh, Jimmy Dore uh, talking about it here. He's got this uh, hour long uh, special where he talks about it. So I don't know if you got to want to bury the league, but Nina Turner went off the rails the other day on Twitter, calling anybody who criticized her a white, uh, an anti-black racist. And let's just remember what she used to say about me. Uh, and your, my husband Jimmy Dore will be interviewing you soon. <laughs> oh, and I oh, miss Jimmy Dore. <laughs> now I'm meeting the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brains yeah. behind the operation. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay, exactly. now I know where all that power comes from. Are you oh. kidding? I love that man, and I hear you do too. I do. So I am thrilled. <laughs> All right, I know I'm going to see you in a minute. Jimmy Dore says stuff that I can't say. I okay, know. I know. So uh, he might. What, what do I say that you can't say and why can't you say it? I say the truth about politics that she can't say or she would lose her space inside the establishment politic machine. That's what that means. And that's okay. Okay. Is it wild? The more it's power that they get, the less power they have. The more power How they get, the less power. Here we go. Okay, so, I, okay. Know. I know. So yeah, he might also ego. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Thank okay. you. So I'm her alter ego. I say things she can't say. She loves me. Generic Viagra and CVS costs $45 per I hate ads. Milligram I really do. But with a newly announced <laughs> pro Skip. Uh, and then she said this in June. She said, make demanding better from a Democrat from Democrats makes you a good Democrat. Oh. Demanding better from Democrats makes you a good Democrat. <laughs> But they're, but they're the George W. decider dictator of that. Remember, they, they get to decide when it's the right time and place to criticize and demanding better from Democrats. It, 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 it's interesting how that works, and it only works for them. It doesn't work for anyone making $20 an hour or less. And I, it, it doesn't work for the freaking the working class. It doesn't work for the middle class. Sure as fuck doesn't work for the goddamn poor. Oh, it, it's there for only them. It's their own personal ghoul. Neener, neener, neener. What the fuck? And another thing. I want to bring this up. If this drama happened... If this little dust-up, the same freaking dust-up happened 18 months ago, the reformists will be the one. The reformists are the ones that always say, you're dividing the left. Be quiet. Stop this. Stop this criticism. You're dividing the left. But they're free to divide the left. The reformists are free and clear to divide the left. Nina Turner, Cenk Uger, Anna Kasparian, Figueredo, uh, Namiki Kotz, the list goes on and on. Brooklyn Dad. 
All these reformists got all the reformists are free and clear to divide the left, to decider and decider George to the decider George W. Bush style, who is a real and who is not a real leftist. It's funny how it works that way. But it's it, you know it's not, it, it's funny how it works that way. But problem is it's not. People are catching on. People are catching on. I'm gonna I'm gonna have this uh, in the description. It's an, about an hour long, great fucking video. Expert fucking video by Jimmy Dore. But I'm going to move on here to Sabby. Because um, she, when when I left the show, when I left her uh, show Thursday night, after I had, uh, after I talked about Culver's, um, she prefaced this saying, I really don't want to do this story. I really don't want to do this. It made her sick. It it I it made me sick too. When when it when I caught wind of this on the couch like 10, 15 minutes later after I got off of uh, Savvy's uh, show, and I'm scrolling Twitter on my phone, and I see this drama unfold between Nina Turner and Jimmy Dore. I, I'm like. I'll be honest, I kind of I, I started to get teary eyed. I started to get teary eyed and I put my phone down and I'm just like, why the fuck can't you do better? It's that freaking hard to ask. Just do better. Be better. What the hell? I was beside myself. But as I said in the comment section of her of Savvy's video, what caught me first and what made me disgusted was a little bit different than what made Sabrina sick. We got to get into the story about Jimmy Dore and Nina Turner. And I am going to do a call-in segment tonight right after this, because I do want to hear from you guys. I want to start off by saying this. Originally, I did not want to talk about this. Those of you who are in DM groups with me know I really did not want to talk about this. A couple people reached out to me and asked me, what did I think about Nina Turner's statement in reference to the anti-blackness and her being a black woman since I'm a black woman? And then I thought, there aren't many black women in this space, so it may be kind of, may look kind of bad if I don't talk about it, you know? Sometimes you just can't win, shit. Some people are going to get mad because I talked about it. Some people will get mad if I didn't talk about it. They put her on the spot. They put Sabrina on the spot with that question. No wonder she didn't want to freaking touch it. Don't blame her. And then what stood out to her is another reason. Whatever. I want to try to, I guess, present both sides of this situation that has happened. And we're going to start with the original tweet. We're going to go through. But I have to tell you, after seeing all this, this whole exchange yesterday on Twitter, and I know people have had battles here and there on the left and there's been disagreements. This time, I don't know it. It made me feel kind of sad. Yep. This time it was different. I, I don't know why. I, I think maybe as I talk about it, I'll understand why it made me feel that way. But this time I felt like it was on a different level and it just made me feel not good. So I want to start with this original tweet. This is the tweet that started it all from what I have seen. This tweet came from Nina Turner and she said, my prediction of the fallout of the FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago is that we're probably going to see a bunch of MAGA Republicans call to abolish the FBI. Now, let's talk about this for just a second. When I first saw this tweet, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I took it the way some people did. But I looked at it again and I see how some people could take it that way too. When I first saw this tweet, I felt like it was what she said it was, that she was making a prediction where she says, my prediction is this is going to happen. Granted, there were people, and we talked about this the other day, that MTG and uh, Candace Owens 
you know, kind of did just that in a sense, right? But then another part of me just kind of feels like even if they did do that, so what? I'm all for abolishing the FBI. <laughs> I'm all for let them go. Just go, okay? Go away. But that was the way I saw the tweet. Then I saw other people point this tweet out to me and they took it differently. And Jimmy Dore is one of the ones that took this differently. And I've looked at this again and I said, oh, I, I can see that point too. Granted, when I'm on Twitter, I'm not trying to look deeply into tweets most of the time. I just read and skim and move on, that kind of thing. Now this goes on. Because- Oh, not another ad. <laughs> I used to pay $240 every month for car insurance. Now, check out how much- So Jimmy Dore responded to this tweet. He said, when lefties cheer about the F, excuse me, when lefties cheer on the FBI, you know they're serious about being a Democrat. There's nothing wrong with that tweet. That was a good tweet by, by Jimmy. All right, nothing wrong with that. When left, he's right. When lefties cheer on the FBI, you know they're serious about being a Democrat, establishment Democrat. And they're not, they're not about being a, uh, uh, a progressive Democrat who knows the deep and dark history of the FBI and how the FBI was used. I had to, I bring up the uh, study on here constantly about centrist uh, centrist extremist theory and onion ring theory that the the encounter sub, uh, subversion theory where uh, police and law enforcement always assume falsely that there is a a, uh, a a criminal element involved in dissent, free argument, raillery, ridicule, and stuff like that, and protest. And uh, I, I bring that study on here constantly that shows that uh, conclusively that uh, the FBI and the CIA and all these alphabet soup agencies have a long history of attacking and going after it pretty much and, and destroying, they destroyed uh, socialists, the socialist left, the anarchist left like me, they, they wiped out uh, communism. Basically, they have destroyed all, all forms. Uh, uh, they destroyed the left in so much that you can't be left, you, you cannot be to the left of Bernie Sanders. The only the only acceptable leftist position is to somehow fall between Bernie Sanders and Liz Cheney or or uh, who's that one uh, or Ann Coulter for for fuck's sake because Ann Coulter was rehabbed uh, uh, last year by the by the reformist Democrats these faux progressives anything beyond that is batshit insane and they lump us the they 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 the centrist extremists lump far leftists as the friends you know they call us moon bats with the far right wing nuts we're all the goddamn same but if we stay on we if we squish and scream and, and squirm and squish and squirm on this centrist center we're good we're, we're, we're the the center is is the holy anointing it's it's the gospel it is the 700 club it is incontrovertible always right and beyond reproach and beyond dissent and and this has been going on for a good 50 years and that's why people um people now have gotten to the point where they don't trust centrism anymore centrum centrism is just fucking dead and i also want to say this i've noticed that anytime when i mention Every time, anytime when I mentioned that study on centrist extremism and counter -subver subversion theory, half my audience fucking leaves. Savvy has another, uh, uh, Savvy said something that whenever she brings about certain topics, uh, uh, talks about certain topics, half her audience leaves. It's the, it's the topics that are uncomfortable. 
And I think, at least in my case, in, when it comes to my show, a corrupted poll show here, is that whenever I talk about centrist extremism, because there's, there's, this, there's this moronic view that centrists can't be extreme, which is an extremist view in and of itself. They can be. Anyone can be an extremist. What happened, though, what I think is happening, though, and why it causes half of my freaking audience to disappear here is because the capitalist corporate press has lumped centrism and moderates together. And they're not. They are not. In my opinion, I, I, in my opinion, moderates and centrists are not synonyms. So what's the difference? What are what are the what are what are the uh, nuances here? Well, let's get granular, as Double J Jeff Jarrett would say. Let's get granular here. Centrists, whenever they argue for something, and whenever they present their positions and their opinions, they don't do so from a leadership position. They don't do it through like uh, with authority. They don't, they don't lead. Let's just put it that way. They do not, they don't lead at all. And that's because centrism isn't a leadership position. It is a refuge seeking position. Centrism has always been, eep, 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 eep. oh my God, eep, eep. Oh my God, we got all these crazy, all these moon bats, the moon bats over here and the wee nuts over here. Oh my God, what are we going to do? It's all about seeking refuge. Moderates, on the other hand, moderates are fine with the very one thing that scares the fuck out of centrists. Populism. You, you can talk to a moderate all day long and they will support, they will throw their weight behind populist bipartisan policies. Centrists won't. They don't. They're all about the refuge. Their position is, since the wing nuts and the moon bats can't be trusted with power, we got to stop. We got to make sure they never have it. We're, we're, we're the only people that should. Which is an in and of itself, in and of itself, an extremist view. And if if uh, we would, if we could get rid of the centrists and put some actual uh, principled moderates in there, everything would be great. We'd have actually have progress for the working class. But centrism isn't like that. Centrism doesn't want to do that. Centrism, let's face it, centrism, when it was in Nazi Germany, the Zentrum Party. They were responsible for Hitler's rise. They were, they, if you look at history, Chris Hedges even talks about this regularly. If you look at the history, uh, Von Papen, uh, or Von Papen, how you pronounce his name, of, this, of the German centrism, Centrum, and Hitler was always the re enabling, rewarding figure behind Hitler's rise. You will find von Papen everywhere you find Hitler. And the reason for that is simple. The, the, the German centra, the Centrum, the German Centrum Party, the centrists in Germany, they were more comfortable with Hitler and a fascist because the only alternative was wealth redistribution by a democratic socialist. They didn't want a democratic socialist because they was, they was gonna lose. Wealth redistribution was going to happen in the converse, no. But they wanted to make sure that all their ill-gotten gains stayed ill-gotten and stayed theirs. That's why they threw their weight behind Hitler. They're fine. The, these people, the, the centrists are fine and dandy. A-O-K -okay with fascists. But they don't like populists. And they certainly don't like moderates either. And then, which is fine because moderates hate them too.
Anyway, back to Sabby. And so I looked at that and I read this tweet again and I thought, is she cheering on the FBI? And I think this was the part where I could see both sides of it. I could see that some people will read this and see, oh, she's cheering on the FBI. And some people will read this and say, oh, she's making a prediction that this is what's going to happen with conservatives. So I can see both sides of it. I want to make that very clear. Now, so far, this is not the part that made me sad. I'm, I'm starting to feel it now because we're getting into it. Yep. Getting closer. And you can, you can just, the dread, okay? The dread is so thick, you could cut it with a knife. Nina Turner responded to Jimmy Dore's tweet here. And she said, when Jimmy Dore knocks a black progressive woman for pointing out conservatives' hypocrisy when it comes to the FBI, you know he's serious about being anti-black and protecting conservatives. And now I feel it again. This is the part I think that makes me feel sad. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not even the part about protecting conservatives. It's the part about being anti-black. There you go. Notice, notice the differences between me and Sabrina. What, what part of this set us off? What set me off was the black progressive woman. And we know damn well Nina Turner isn't the black progressive woman in question here. No. She's been rejected by the squad. Democrats don't freaking want her. Brianna Joy Gray and Sabby is probably more progressive than Nina Turner is. So it's just, that's what set me off. I'm like, this, this is hilarious. She's out here trying to cosplay and trying to uh, uh, advertise herself as something that she isn't. She's a Democrat. She is an establishment Democrat, conservative Democrat. She is a DLC, pro-police Democrat. But she's trying to cosplay and advertise herself as a black progressive woman. Ha <laughs> ha, no. And then when I saw this part in Savvy's video later on, I really got freaking ill. I was really fucking disgusted because the obviousness was staring me dead in the face the entire time. What probably, and I'm going to go out on a limb, and I think this is it. I think this is what crystallized why Savvy felt like shit and really felt sad over this. It's because Nina Turner used and pl she played the race card, but she also played it inappropriately. That was staring me dead in the face, and it went... Whew. But for somebody who's used to it because she's a black progressive woman, no wonder. No wonder she caught it. No wonder. That's why it freaking bugged the fuck out of her. And at one point, Sabby had to leave. She had to disappear because it upset her enough. And her producer, Eric, had to, you know, come in and uh, read the uh, Super Chats for a while. It's, it was that freaking sad. And it gets worse. Status coup. Jordan Cheriton. I'm gonna go ahead and close this because this is the this is the video I want to show you guys. He goes off on this little 12 minute tangent. <sighs> He's siding with Lena Turner. I'm just going to play this. Let it go. I'm going to play some of and this. And it's not just about the right-wing fascism. This is the culmination of 30 years of the growth of partisan media, Fox News, 
Rush Limbaugh for, for decades, Sean Hannity on the radio and Fox News, then the digital media, so Stephen Crowder, Charlie Kirk, uh, you, you know, there's plenty of right-wing, big right-wing channels on YouTube, right-wing uh, podcasters, Tim Pool. This is the culmination of 30 years of extreme partisan media that has now evolved into it's war, game on, tyranny, and they're inciting unstable people to actually believe their bullshit, to actually believe the country is under attack by Biden or by, you know, Antifa or by like transgender people. And they're inciting people like the guy who went to an FBI office in Cincinnati today to shoot up a bunch of people who was killed and who was there on January 6th. Now, I will give him that. I will give Jordan Cherton that, you know, this uh, the uh, the storming of the FBI office by that by that by that lunatic. Yeah. No wonder they put that, that person should have been. Yeah, I won't argue. I won't belabor that point. But what. If you notice what Jordan is trying to do is he's trying to lump this kind of extremism with the Nina Turner, Jimmy door flap. And he's trying to pump up the constant, all pervasive, no true Scotsman fallacy that reformists like him, along with Jake Uger and Kyle Kalinske, keep and, and Figueredo and the Mickey Const and uh, Anna Kasparian all try to beat us out over the head with. I'm going to see if I can pull. Um, let me go to my Twitter real quick because I'm going to see if I can pull Jordan Cheriton's tweet here because I want to, I've, yeah, let's see. See if I can pull that tweet where he, Wade in on the Nina Turner, Jimmy Dorf flap here. Uh, it'll be under his tweets and replies, most likely. Let's see if we can find it here. Because I I seen this tweet when I when I came off a of Sabby's show on Thursday, and I seen a tweet by him, and I just oh for fuck's sake, he he wasn't helping. So let me pause this and I'll see if I can find it. That way I can save uh, save some uh, time on my video here. All right, I think I found it here, if I recall. Um, Brianna Joy Gray had this tweet where she said, lots of unexpected pro-FBI takes from the left. And it's this little gif here. <laughs> and have you noticed, yeah, Jordan Cheriton... Right off the gate says, I'm not clear why it's pro FBI to think it's a good thing for a president that potentially committed crimes to face accountability. And this came after a subpoena was issued and not complied with. Seems like a strange straw man folks are making. Mark Washington says, you're going to start calling Brio right winger too? Jordan says, I didn't call her a right winger. Just don't agree with this take and narrative going around that it's that it's celebrating the FBI to think it's a good thing if Trump is held accountable if he's shown to commit crimes. Yeah, notice he puts if it's shown that he committed crimes in parentheses. He's not. It, it, I also think Hillary should have been indicted. Okay, but what's with the parentheses there, Jordan? He's showing. He's telling you. And not and, and, you know, it's, it's fucking funny. In Jordan Cheriton's eyes, Trump is already guilty until he's proven innocent, and he'll never be proven innocent. That's that's his take. That's Jordan's partisan take. And he and and this whole I also think Hillary should have been indicted. That's just throwing us a bone. That's all that is. Munn wasn't having any of it. He said, You might not have called Bree a right winger, but you certainly implied others are. And this is the tweet that set me off. It, it pissed me off. 
I haven't implied others are. I have directly said that Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, and others are playing to a right-wing audience. I stand by that. I don't think Bree is doing that. Just disagree with this take. And Mark C. Washington responds, playing to a right-wing audience and being right-wing aren't much different. You know, this is what he's saying. I watch every video Jimmy puts on YouTube, and he is about as far from right-wing as you can get. What it seems is that you have takes that go against the Democratic agenda, you are deemed right-wing. Yeah. It's the reformists. It is the Jordan Cheriton. It is the uh, uh, Cenk Huger and Anna Kasparian. Uh, it is uh, the reformist faction that are uh, policing Policing the uh, policing us, policing the left by just by waving their little scepter, and I'm being generous, calling it a scepter. <laughs> I can think of another another part of the anatomy. On the I can think of another part of you know of the human anatomy, but it's 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 their little kingly scepter, and George W. Decider dictator style. They're decidering. Uh, they, I am the decider, and I get to decide who's a left and who isn't. That's what they're doing. The new, it, it, it's the no true Scotsman fallacy at work, and they get the and, and and they they're the ones that get to decide it. Well, at least they're trying to because they're richer than you. You, who what the hell are you? You Culver's fucking you Culver's working ass freaking grill bitch. Who are you to, who do you think you are? Thinking that you can compete and you're more important and you can uh, talk up to the great and glorious and gossamer jank of freaking Uger, Anna of, and Saint Anna of Kasparian. Know your place, boy. And shut your, and, and hash up your uppity mouth. That's what these assholes are trying to say. But, 18 months ago, when the same when the same drama would happen, when when there would be similar leftist infighting, they're like, <gasps> "You stop! You're dividing the left. What's wrong with you? Why are you dividing the left?" And then they turn around and divide the left. It, it's so hypocritical. It's ridiculous. Let me see if I can find another tweet by Jordan that set me off because I remember another one. Bingo. Found a bastard. Here's what he said. This is in response to Nina Turner's tweet. In response to Nina Turner's tweet, what does Jordan say? Weird how Jimmy Dore was pro-FBI when there was a chance that Comey would indict Hillary Clinton over her private server, but is anti-FBI anti cheering when it comes to Trump. And, he, and he's bone grafting that onto Nina Turner playing the freaking race card inappropriately. Right there. This tweet alone showed me why I was more justified taking my Cobra story to an actual black progressive woman than the, than, than the, than the people that pretend so. The people that pretend to be. Or the people that pretend to be goddamn progressive, like Jordan. That's and this is another reason why I've even asked on this show, and I have asked freaking Jordan to his own goddamn face on Twitter, who's financing your ass? Because if you look at his, whenever he's not policing the right wing on status quo, video after video, like Kyle Kalinsky, I think he's trying to out Kyle Kalinsky, uh, you know. He's trying to uh, out Kyle the Mr. Ky out Kyle Mr. Kalinsky there when he's not um, uh, trying to police the right wing. He's shoving microphones into the into the faces of the poor, the poor, the poor people like me, the for the jobless, the foreclosed, the ruined, the destroyed, and then turning around and trying to sheepdog them back into the very Democratic goddamn party that ruined them, that won't stand up to him. This is why I could. I, there was no way in hell I was going to bring my. I, I was going to bring my Culver's issue to Jordan. I picked savvy. Shit. Because Jordan is disingenuous. Jordan will pretend he fucking cares. 
and he's shown that. Not only that, but if you look at their look at their channels, look at pull here. God damn it! I've got I, I've got a browser here. Let's pull them up. I'll make this point real quick, and then I'll get the hell out of here It'll, in my in my uh, rant here because I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't. I said it was going to be a long show, and then I get to this point, and I'm thinking, "Ooh, half hour, great!" Now, now I'm running ten minutes over. Let's do this again here. I'll, I will show you in real time. Let's go to Secular Talk and go to videos. Kyle Kalinsky, Kristen Cinema, Mar says FBI raid saved Trump. FBI races for right wing terror. Um, Alex Jones, uh, Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, more Trump, more M MTG. Who, who's is this? His audience, you know his audience right away. Kyle Kalinske, Jordan Cheriton, and this reformist, the reformist left, the faux progressive left, are when, it, when I, I've said this before on this show, when a democratic part, when democratic majorities, democrat, when Democrats who ha, when Democrats have the majority in a majority in power, what happens is when their popularity drops below forty percent, they stop the, the these Fox progress these faux progressives stop criticizing. The right. I mean, they stop criticizing the left. They start acting as a firewall for the for the left by changing the target of their channels, the target of their videos. They start policing the right wing, and it, you can see it video after video after video after video. It's the same goddamn villains. The same clowns over and over and over again. They're pumping and beating on and, and exposing right wing people out of power who have no fucking power, have no goddamn stroke. They don't hold the majorities in order to act as a firewall, as a buffer, as a shield, in much the same way cinema and mansion are a firewall, a shield, to deflect the arrows meant for the establishment Democrats. They are picking their sides. And I've, I've said it once and I'll say it a thousand times. If any time a reformist leftist is going to devote over 60, 70, 80% of their YouTube channel to policing the right, you know damn well they're going to start policing the left. They will do it. And guess what? This is how they do it. They do it by trying to smear Jimmy Dore and smear Aaron Maté and say he's playing the right wing hacks or he's anti-black. And it, it's not working. It's actually backfiring on them. But yet they keep trying to do it. They think it, it's McCarthyism, and it's like you tell a lie long enough and often enough, somehow it's going to be magically true. Nobody's really fallen for it. Um, which brings us to the final tweet I want to get to here. This is Brianna Joy Gray and uh, Jenk Uger. I'm going to play a little bit of this, and then I'll show you my uh, response and then get the hell out of here for the night. All of the dispute. Here, let me play the whole thing. Get the fucking ad off of here. Oh, God. I, w I wish we had an ad blocker worth a fuck. Don't you? I do. Tulsi Gabbard. Um, first, uh, Tulsi Gabbard hosting Tucker Carlson's show on Friday. Um, you notice it's all about the scorekeeping, folks. It's all about the scorekeeping. And that's the inherent problem with scorekeepers. Even when you work in fast food, even if you work in retail, whenever your coworkers are a scorekeeper, 
and they start keeping score, it sucks. And the reason why it sucks is because you then have to become a scorekeeper in your own defense. And this is this is the ploy they're doing. This is this is their scam. All these reformist leftists, all these shit libs, all these people that are so happily and so cavalier in policing the right wing with their channel content are now deciding, hey, why not police the right? And they get the and and they're deciding, they're picking and choosing. I am uh, I am the hub of the wheel, the engine of life, and I get the decider who is a right, or left, who is a who is a leftist and who isn't, who's real and who's fake. No, and nobody died, nobody died and said, you, 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 yeah, Jane Cougar, man, you you you're the you're the paragon. But he he likes to manufacture himself to think so. He likes to manufacture himself into that grand poobah. Um. Do you still think that they have good intent and that they are not fake left? That they that they just happen to and and if they're going to score keep like this, if they're going to score keep like this and um, police the left like this, then you know who their audience is. Their audience isn't people like me. Their audience isn't Brianna Joy Gray or Savvy Steps. Their audience are boomers, out of touch, fucking boomers who can be filched and grifted out of their social security because that's the only kind of subscribers they got left. Uh, just pummel the left and agree with the right wing all the time, just coincidentally. I'm just curious what your take on that is lately. I, I didn't catch it. I've, I've never actually met or spoken to or corresponded with uh, Tulsi Gabbard. I don't really have a relationship with her. Um, like a lot of people on the left, I really appreciated her standing up for Bernie in 2016. Um, but honestly, haven't really followed her much since. So, you know, I think part of my frustration is um, the characterization of me having an alliance with people that I, I barely think about, much less, you know, have a relationship with. I do have a relationship with Glenn. He was my boss at The Intercept. Um, he's been supportive of me throughout my career. I think he's obviously very bright and thoughtful. And when we agree, we agree. And I find that he's one of the best advocates for whatever it is that we agree on. When we disagree, I have him on my show and we talk about it. And I have brought up some of the criticisms to him directly that people have about whether or not he pushes back sufficiently hard. But he goes on Tucker Carlson and, and other similar shows. We probably will continue to disagree about how one should best handle those types of situations. But you know, I think there's a lot of room uh, on the left for a lot of different people advocating for a lot of overlapping interests, and I'm, you know, happy to be a part of that. Okay, so that's an interesting answer and a, and a good answer. And guys, uh, I yes, I am muted. Fuck. It, interesting. It was an interesting answer before it was a good answer. Notice he he is he is judge, jury, and executioner in his own kabuki court. Right between this fucking fool ass head. <laughs> fucking clown. I, let me clarify from the beginning as well uh, that I wouldn't have Jimmy Dore on this show. I think he's a total fraud uh, and uh, gets all of his money from the right wing and is one of the worst people in media. Hey, that, that, that reminds me. When when he worked for you, Jinky, when Jinky, you, when Jim, when Jimmy Dore worked for you, and you were a former Republican that turned somehow, you were a former Republican, gung ho for the Iraq War in the early nineties. He, he took your money then, didn't you? This is this is this is a fucking. <laughs> this is ridiculous. He can take Katzenberg money. Jink Uger can take Katzenberg money. He would take DLC money if he could. He would take center fetishist money if he could, if he hasn't already. Oh, but but, but Jimmy Dore is, you know, he's 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 like Aaron Mate. He's on the he's on the Putin take. What a bunch of shit. Uh but 
Brianna is on the show because we're gonna actually have a real conversation where we figure out what our opinions are instead of yelling at each other through other people, etc. online. So obviously I think that uh, Notice there, hold on, let me play that back if I can. I think he's a total fraud. See, I'm not gonna. I, I I'm not gonna have my. I'm not gonna have Jimmy Dore on my show because he's a total this and total that. But we're gonna police people who become guest hosts of a show on Fox News. We're gonna police the people. We're gonna police Tulsi Gabbard for being a guest host on uh, uh, for guest hosting Tucker Carlson. When why why uh, why didn't you come on the MSNBC and guest host? Uh, one of their shows. Oh, that's right. MSNBC, MSNBC wouldn't have them on. CNN, CNN wouldn't have them on. It's funny. They, they, they forget all about this notion where, where you will the ends, you will the means. These, these fake ass bastards, these reformist cretins. They're meaning the ends with their t vernacular, with their talk, with their, with their shaming and their policing. They were, they're willing the ends because, and they're willing the means. That's what, it, what's, what's this all about? Uh, and uh, gets all of his money from the right wing. And yeah, all his money from the right wing. Where do you get your money at? AARP? Or those, or, or those that with ARP, AARP uh, policies, because that's the only people that freaking, that's probably the only people left watching fucking TYT anymore. And is one of the worst people in media, uh, but one of the worst people in media. I like that. <laughs> Brianna is on the show because we're gonna actually have a real conversation where we figure out what our opinions are instead of yelling at each other through other people, etc. online. So obviously, I think that uh, you, you might have good faith, and I and I and, and I'm also being honest and saying might. Okay, so let's actually talk. And I've written, read some of your pieces, Brianna, that I totally agreed with. So so let's get into what you think. I might come back to, to the Jimmy's of the world, but I might not. But I hear you, and that's already an important clarification that you don't view it as a quote unquote alliance, whatever that means. See, everything, everything out of out of. Jank Uger's mouth is Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore. Mother, that motherfucker rent, it lives rent free in that guy's head. Anyway, I responded, piss on that goddamn clown. <laughs> and then I, in my retweet, I said, bullshit. It's disingenuous. As I've stated on a corrupted poll show way too many times to count. Reformists like Cenk, Kasparian, Kalinsky, and Sheraton, who are so willing and so cavalier to spend 80, 60 to 70 to 80 percent of their content policing the right, are they're also willing to police the left with their content. And that's what's ha that's that's what's happening here. Reformists like Cenk, Kasparian, Kalinsky, and Sheraton, who are willing to police the right wing with their content on their own YouTube channels, are also willing to police the left with their content. And, and this is what it looks like, folks. No true Scotsman, no true leftists. They get to decide. They're, 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 they're the George W. Decider dictator of everything here. And uh, they're also the biggest frickin' insufferable clowns in the uh, in the in the uh, in the equation. But anyway, that's it for me. I, I need to shut the fuck up. I need to get a drink. I've been going on for fifty-four minutes. Um, I briefly want to say uh, a big shout out and a thank you. Uh, a big thank you to. Uh, the uh, viewers uh, of Savvy Sabs and for Savvy for having me on last Thursday. Um, as a result of uh, the initial, uh, the, uh, she, let me see if I can pull that up here. Let me switch back. Let me transition here because I'm gonna. I'll, I'll show you this in real time if I can. Um, 
Let me go back to her channel here if I can. Her other videos. I can show this in real time. Where are you, Sebi? Here we go. Okay, this video right here. This is the original uh, video that uh, that uh, streamed four days ago, Thursday, where uh, I was on so, um, Sunday morning. It was it had over six thousand views, and Sunday morning was also uh, the the day I we reached the uh, GoFundMe goal of twelve hundred twelve hundred dollars for me. So again. Big, big thank you to Sabrina and her viewers for, for, for coming out with the mutual aid because uh, I really needed it. I got the 1200 There was about $145, $150 donated total direct me, directly to PayPal. So that also helped. So uh, I... Overall, I got about thirteen hundred. I'd say thirteen fifty, almost fourteen hundred dollars in donations over the entire weekend. Um, just before recording the show, I paid the rent. The rent came out to now, according to my lease, the rent is seven thirty-five. But because I was two weeks late and plus a fifty-dollar late fee, it jacked up to uh, seven or eight thirty-five. So I got two. Uh, I got the money order for eight thirty-five, and I paid that thing uh, just like, just uh, like ten minutes before recording this show. So the rent is taken care of, and um, I'll be uh, paying my electric tomorrow. Sixty dollar electric bill, fifty dollar internet bill, and then I'll be back to square one again. <laughs> and I'll have to find. Uh, I'm I'm chomping at the bit trying to find work. Uh, within the next two weeks, so I can uh, uh, go back to being self-sufficient to some degree, considering uh, we're still under, uh, uh, we still got a COVID-19 problem. We still got, um, we still got inflation. But yeah, I just, so anyway, I wanted to thank all those, uh, all six 6,000 views on that video Sunday morning, and also all the contributors, all the people that uh, donated put me over really really appreciate it the, mutual mutual aid and independent media rocks and so does the viewers <sighs> take a bow everyone you did it you <laughs> you meant the moment I couldn't be happier. Again, thank you. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Until next time. Taganzo. Yeah, buddy. Have a good one.